Assalamu alaikum uh, and my best wishes to all the students and everybody who will be watching this video. So in this video I will be talking about a very important topic which is of concern to both developed and developed countries about undernutrition. So in this we primarily focus on nutrition in children and the undernutrition can affect any age but primarily this disease which involves children and especially people who are under 5 years of age. Uh, the learning objectives for this video would be that uh, by the end of this video, children should be able to, and people who are watching this video, should be able to find the response to malnutrition, describe causes of malnutrition, uh, describe assessment and classification of malnutrition, and then describe, very importantly, the prevention of malnutrition. Okay, moving on. So, what is malnutrition basically? So, malnutrition refers, as you can easily understand, Anything which is any departure from normal nutrition would be called as a malnutrition. <clears throat> so it refers to deficiency. It refers to excesses. That means you have a deficiency of a nutrient or nutrients, then you have excess of nutrient or nutrients, or then you have, simply speaking, there is an imbalance in a person's intake of energy or intake of nutrients, which results in a condition which we call as malnutrition. Now, this malnutrition can be characterized. The three broad groups. One is obviously unnutrition, which includes wasting, that means you have a very low weight for a particular height. It is stunting, that means low height for age, that means person dwarfed or has less height for that compensable one that you have for his age and underweight, he has low weight for age. Then we have micronutrient related malnutrition, which includes micronutrient deficiencies, say in terms of vitamins and minerals, say iron, iodine, other things. Then you have people who are overweight, or obesity, as we discussed last video. We talked about overweight and obesity and other common problems which arise because of the uh, obesity and other things like heart disease and stroke. Now, as far as undernutrition is concerned, there are four primarily subforms. One is what is called as a low weight for height, wasting. So this usually indicates a recent and severe weight loss. The person has not had enough food to eat. And recently, there has been some reason why the person was not able to eat, which has resulted in uh, wasting. There's a lot of weight. So, his body height is normal, but his weight for that height is less. Then you have low height for age, because of usually chronic undernutrition. And this is referred to as stunting or dwarfing. Then you have children who have low weight for age, it's called as underweight. And sometimes, obviously, the possibility of childhood might be having a combination. So, it can be uh, stunted. Wasted or underweight or both. And different symptoms only from nutrient intake of micronutrients. Usually, in cases where her nutrition, they have the deficiency of micronutrients also at the same time. It's quite expected. Now, how big is the problem? Well, when we look at the magnitude of nutrition, so globally, 1.9 billion adults, as we have discussed last time, also are overweight or obese. Then, around 450 million are underweight. So, both problems are there. As far as children are concerned, 2 million children under 5 years of age are wasted, 17 million severely wasted, and more than 150 million are stunted. While at the same time, which is an unusual picture, at the same time, 41 million are overweight or obese. So we have both the things happening at the same time. 45% of deaths among children under 5 years of age they can be contributed or attributed to unnutrition. So, one or the other way, it's around 50% means every other second death. Can be attributed to undernutrition in uh, children. And these mostly occur in low and middle income countries because of the reason we know. At the same time, what the unfortunate thing is that at the same time we are seeing undernutrition, we have the problems of underweight and obesity rising in these countries. Now, what are the causes? If you look at the causes of undernutrition, simply putting simple and understand one is the intake of food. In one way, the person is not able to take food, either it is poor in quality or it is not adequate in quantity. Then there is excess of proteins, calories, which could be a reason because of disease. Then there is increased demand or there is increased absorption, again because of infection or some other disease, putting excess demand on the body. So you can say there is infection, usually the primary reason which reduces or best reduces appetite. And then malnutrition. Malnutrition predisposed to the causation of infection. And these act as, as you can see. This schematic diagram, malnutrition starts for some reason, it is say primarily 
is food intake, this would lead to growth failure. That means growth failure results in immune impaired immune response, and which causes infection. So, which increases morbidity, obviously. Yes. Malnutrition leading to growth failure, impaired immune response, immune system, and then infection. This leads to, as you can have, you know, in infection, children usually have loss of sight and they are lost in salts because of diarrhea, vomiting. B. Again, contributing malnutrition. This becomes a vicious cycle. Now, as far as social factors are concerned, poverty, you understand, because of inability to buy food, literacy, ignorance, not knowing what to give and how to give it. Overcrowding obviously will lead to infections, other problems, and large families, obviously, too many children are there. Poor mental health, obviously, results in poor childhood problems, and then faulty feeding practices because we are not able to cook properly or we prep food in a way which destroys the nutrient. And there are certain beliefs and taboos <coughs> what we should eat and what we should not eat. How do we assess on nutrition? Now? Very important. So, assessment obviously based on measurement of parameters. So we have height, weight, we have mid-arm circumference, skin full thickness, waist and, waist and hip circumference. But obviously since we are talking about nutrition, as we said, under nutrition, primarily for children who are under five years of age. So therefore, for this thing, looking at some of the parameters we used are weight, height, mid-arm circumference, and skin full thickness. Waist to pressure primarily you've done in adults. And then once you measure these parameters, they are expressed in terms of ratios, we call this indices. We have something called weight for age, that means weight of the child for his age, or compute the reference that he should be having for that age. Then height for age, weight for height, then mid, mid upper arm circumference for age, then waist to pressure, which we said primarily is reserved for adults, but children primarily we use the first four. Now this is once you get these parameters, so measure these parameters, they are expressed and used or displayed on a what's called as road to health card or growth chart card which you must be familiar with. Most of we have the weight and kgs on the, the y axis and we have the age and months on the x axis. Usually this card you can see starts from birth right up to third year of life showing the, the weight of the child, how it's going. And then obviously it shows different shades of these colors which express different grades of nutrition. From normal to grade one, grade two, grade three, and grade four, malnutrition. At the same time, it's showing the height also. This is primarily this score chart is used to to show the relationship between weight and age. <coughs> now, how do we classify under nutrition? Classification primarily can be clinical. Clinically, uh, this is usually classified in two in extreme forms called the score chart and the marasma. Then we have the anthropometric method for grading malnutrition. These are the Following type, we use different classification systems. We have welcome classification, women's classification, Phillips classification, then you have the IAP classification, or loose classification, double grading. Then most of these classification, more or less, they rely on uh, using these indices so weight for age, weight for height, height for age. So these indices are used and they combine with some of the clinical parameters like edema or other clinical signs. Now, this is the IAP classification, it's generally followed in India. So what they do is they will grade one if children have weight for age or height for age between 80 to 100 percent complete reference for that age. So they will label them as new normal. Then the child has these uh, measurements between 70 to 80 percent complete the reference. They will call him as grade one or mild nutrition. Then these these attributes or parameters or measurements are between 60 to 70 percent complete the reference for that age. Then they will label as grade two. And similarly, between 50% grade 3 and less than 50% labeled as grade 4, very severe malnutrition. This is the AOWHO classification of the protein allergy malnutrition or undernutrition, as we say. Today, usually, will would include the in terms of percentage of body weight, the reference compared to the reference, and presence of edema, then deficit in weight or height. They will have kosher car. We have marasmic kosher cut, we have marasmus, we have doffing, and we have underweight. So these are our best. Then we have, especially used by our clinical management patients, we have the, we classify them to severe acute malnutrition and we have the moderate acute malnutrition. These are the criteria. So we use four criteria basically. We have weight, weight for height or weight for length, 
then we have the mid mid upper arm circumference by little pitting and visible sign of wasting so obviously in case of severe they will be present there in case of the moderate these signs are less obvious especially the last two pitting is absent and usually the child is clinically well with good appetite how do we manage a case of undernutrition we come across a child who is undernourished what's what's being done obviously in the acute case we'll be having due the underlying cause which has caused nutrition some infection is there that is treated with an antibiotic the underlying infestations are treated then adequate quiet diet is given they usually around 150 kg per kg and usually 3 to 4 grams of protein then this much has to be fed then obviously it has to be in all frequent feeds so the child can tolerate it and slowly build on the child's feeding food then we can we change reduce the intake of food and then change the the the, the pattern how the child is fed and then obviously the important factor is the decoration of social factor led that means the child's mother has to be counseled other caregivers have to be counseled to find out what were the cause and then the more important part in this case is to give advice to the mother to make sure that this does not occur so this would be in terms of growth monitoring say talking about oral rehydration if there is diarrhea continuing breastfeeding ensuring immunization adopting family planning so that they have less children and then obviously other many other topics apart from our own health child health and so on then as far as prevention of nutrition is concerned this can be done by primarily uh, understanding it in terms of primary secondary and tertiary prevention so in terms of primary prevention we'll be doing the health promotion where we'll be focusing on the nutrition of the mother pregnant post pregnancy as well as the lactation period obviously this will prevent prevention of infants in childhood then promoting correct breastfeeding practices taking growing child emotional planning and spacing of births and improvements in living conditions help then obviously ensuring that they use the supplementary feeding program as we know they have schemes which provide supplementary food or supplements to these group of particular group of population then as far as specific protection is concerned will be obviously in terms of providing protein energy rich for growing children ensuring immunization against ppds then ensuring you know food with iron and with minerals and with a as we know these things are done so primarily examples of specific weight protection then in terms of secondary uh, prevention obviously best thing would be to do an early diagnosis of these cases to be done if you are monitoring the growth of child using the road to have a card or a growth chart really by early diagnosis and this has to be followed by proper treatment of the condition infections other underlying things which are there and then there has to be should be periodic deworming also then as far as disability limitation is concerned we'll be trying to limit the development of further disability if child has developed some nutrition and should maybe he may need hospitalization in this condition where has severe but who can improve his nutrition condition bring him back then have to be followed to ensure that they do not go back into the malnutrition again then rehabilitation which is the example of tertiary prevention in the cases of severely malnourished this is primarily involves nutrition rehabilitation it can be home based or facility based obviously initially has to be facility based or by home based where mothers are trained how they have to be carried out and then obviously she is taught how best the child's nutrition can be improved and can be maintained okay let's summarize so what we discussed is that what is under nutrition or malnutrition when we talk about different forms of undernutrition we form we talked about classification assessment we talked about the causes of undernutrition and primarily we briefly discussed how undernutrition when they present for the clinic uh, clinics how they are managed and then we talked about the prevention what can be done to improve the state so undernutrition so especially in terms of improving child nutrition other parameters or in the interventions can help thank you very much